Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are together with Kamil Nowinski from Altius. We will be talking about Azure Data Factory today, which is a Microsoft tool, ETL tool in cloud. It's our pleasure to have you, Kamil, today. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And we, we, we also have uh, Mustafa as my uh, friend, as always, from Microsoft Turkey. I hope you all enjoy the uh, session with Kamil today. Thank we you. Are listening to you. And all, uh, I also want to thank uh, Kamil for this uh, great contribution. I am sure that it will be a great session for all of us and community. Thank you again. Sure, thank you. So, OK, let me share my screen. Very quickly. OK, let me let me know if you can see the screen. Now okay, we see it. OK. Cool. So it's actually Azure Data Factory, obviously V2, uh, uh, and uh, mapping data flow. This is the full name of, 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 of this technique that we'll be using during this session. Uh, a few words about me. Uh, like you said, thank you for uh, you know presentation. Uh, and um, uh, my name is Kamil Nowinski. Uh, I'm originally I'm from Poland, but living in UK and working uh, for consultancy company, Altius Com Consultancy Company. Uh, I'm based in London, but I'm not living in London. I'm, I'm located very close. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, I'm a Microsoft uh, MVP, data platform MVP, and um, also working with the data for many years. It's like on this slide, you can see 15 years plus. Well, I don't know. It's working. I started working in IT. I mean, sorry, not maybe working in IT, but working and programming uh, on computers uh, when I have uh, when I was ten. So yeah, <laughs> so it's uh, quite a long 30, time. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, in the reality is thirty plus years. Maybe not experience with BI and and DBA and etc., but generally working and and playing with computers. Yeah, also I'm project member of uh, some um, open source uh, application uh, on GitHub, uh, like uh, STD Merge Wizard, uh, Azure Data Factory Tools, and Azure Data Factory DevOps. I will tell you a few uh, more sentences about this at the end of, of this presentation, because this is not quite like um, exact topic of, 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 of this session, but I think it's uh, worth to know uh, what is this tool and how it can help you. And also I'm founder of the blog Secure Player, uh, secureplayer.net, where you can find uh, not only the technical posts, but some useful information, some links, some cheat sheets as well, recommended books for people who maybe wanted to know how to start uh, in IT or playing with data, you know, preparing and designing the, the architecture, the, the, the data warehouse, for example, or the architecture. So. Uh, or just playing, you know, and, and working with secure server, for example. And, and yeah, uh, I would like to also encourage you to, to visit my YouTube channel uh, where you can find some some useful videos and let me know if you if you find some something useful and, and you will be using this knowledge uh, for yourself. That would be great. Um, and also on the blog, on the blog, there's no not only those things, as I mentioned before, and above, but also we have interviews, interviews in form of podcast and transcript. Uh, so, so far, me and my colleagues, uh, we were talking to uh, many people from the from the market, from our secure server family, uh, you know, area. So probably few of those faces, few of those people so you can recognize um maybe the others not but anyway i would i would encourage you to to visit the blog and and check the podcast as well if you prefer you can read uh, our our chat because it's in transcript uh, version as well so yeah that's that's it about me about the blog about the podcast uh so let's start with the actual topic today so what is the 
Azure Data Factory. So I'm I'm very sad that I can't see you and and ask the question. You know how many people, how many of you were working with SSIS, for example, because it's it's it's, it's something similar. So basically, the Azure Data Factory. It's not exactly the same, but it's orchestration. It's, it's orchestration tool that allows you, you know, orchestrate all the pipeline workload, scheduling, the triggers, and etc. To 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 manage those tasks like copy data, transform data, uh, as you can see, not only from you know structured structured um, data formats like SQL Server or other databases, but also. You can uh, read a lot of unstructured or semi-structured data, uh, like 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 logs, files, and etc., and some media files as well. And uh, and then yeah, ingesting the data through the data factory and and push them to the to the storage. Maybe you know push them to the to the another engine like Azure Databricks to to transform it and and do some other stuff uh, with 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 the, with the notebooks uh, if you prefer and push that to the to the model to the target model that you can use for for reporting in the reporting uh, layer yeah so that the, the last the last um, the last object the last target um, uh, infrastructure or instance might be azure SQL data warehouse which currently we are microsoft calling it azure synapse uh, or maybe Cosmos DB, for example, as well. Uh, so plenty of opportunities how to how to play with data, how to transform them, and, and etc. How to orchestrate the the, the whole um, the whole um, data flow. So what's the key concept, and how how we can understand what is the Azure data Azure data Azure data factory? So. Firstly, Azure Data Hub Factory has got something uh, what we call pipeline. So the pipeline you can schedule, monitor, and manage those pipelines. And pipelines is our logical group of activities. So the activities is some components that doing doing the stuff, doing the the work. Yeah, and the activities can produce some data sets, but also they can consume data sets. Okay. So uh, and the data sets also need to have something like connections, connectors, uh, which uh, which we called here in Azure Data Factory linked service, linked services. OK, and those linked services basic the connectors to the many sources and targets. Uh, plenty of types uh, of connectors are you know, available in Azure Data Factory right now over over 100. So yeah, and those other activity can be run on linked service, um, like an integration runtime. Uh, that's it. So, so I was talking about you know the standard pipelines, but also what we have here in Azure Data Factory is mapping data flow. So, what is the day mapping data flow actually? So, mapping data flows um, uh, helps you play and transform much more with data because the normal pipeline in Azure Data Factory allows you like similarly to, to SSMS, to, sorry, to SSIS integration services, uh, helps you to copy data from point A to point B. Uh, whereas the mapping data flow allows you uh, to do much more, allows you to, you know, transform the data, uh, sort them, merge, joining uh, many sources, and etc. So much more, you know, opportunities you have here comparing to the to the to the to the to the pipeline in Azure Data Factory. Uh, and again, so comparing to integration services, the pipeline is like um, data flow. Sort of like a control flow, uh, like a data flow. It's a data flow like in uh, Azure Data Factory, but exactly it's it's called um, um, specifically it's called mapping data flow. And yeah, so again you have uh, many data sources here. You can have some staging in, in Blob Storage, for example, or ADLS, and you can do a lot of transformations. And uh, at the end, you have this destination, as I mentioned. So how it looks like. So the 
diagram, you can build the the the, the mapping data flow like this, like like you can see on this diagram, like you can see on this uh, uh, on this screenshot. Mm, but uh, what is important to remember and very well known, uh, you know, is that you don't have to know any language. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, know C sharp or, or Scala or, or Python. This, you know, this approach here, building the mapping data flow uh, pipelines, is basically the approach of building with with no code. So basically, you don't have you don't don't have to have any you know developers that have skills building some code yeah forget about it you can just drag and drop actually it's not drag and drop i will show you that later during the demo but it's actually you know adding just new components uh to 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 the flow to the data flow and that's it uh, using those components there's uh, several of them several types of them you can uh, uh, actually building um, the transformation you you want to build and at the end push the data to the sink uh, as you can see so on the left we have the sources on the right we have the sink so uh, and yeah like a standard data transformation you can do all of the things like aggregation data cleaning uh, data conversion some process like data preparation and also you can do uh, a much better data exploration comparing to SSIS. So the data flows, oh, sorry, sorry about this very old slide. Uh, the data flows already is not in preview, it's generally available. Uh, so it's another section in the menu on the left. We will see that in the moment uh, uh, in, in, in during the demo. So if we'd like to build some simple, you know, mapping data flow, it might be, it might look like that. Yeah, having one source and actually it's obligatory to have at least one activity which uh, must be a source. OK, so having a source and then uh, the target in the sync, basically they, they, they call it sync here. Uh, so uh, the target um, might be database, might be other blob storage or, or, or other, other target um, destination um, instance of something what can keep the data. OK, so but this is very simple. Yeah, so uh, the same, the same, you know, pipeline you could do with with normal pipeline in Azure Data Factor because there's no transformation there's no other additional activities between source and target so what what would be the point to, to using mapping data flow in here but you know having you know capabilities of mapping data flow this is the this is your actions this is the components that you can use in mapping data flow so as you can see here you can you can join two sources you can uh, using some conditional split to, to to split to split the flow of data to split the uh, the flow or or stream of data. Yeah, you can use some onion union uh, lookups and 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 much much more like select aggregate uh, pivot and pivot as you can see. Also, you can you can you you you, you can use some window function like in SQL Server, filter sort and and etc. And obviously, as a destination, it's a sync. It's one type of uh, activity. So, how how we can compare SSIS data flow to Azure Data Factory mapping data flow? So, uh, for those of you who worked with uh, or maybe still working with SSIS, so SSIS looks like that. Yeah. So you basically had uh, and have full control how to build all the activities, but um, particularly I'm talking about, you know, where you can uh, place them. Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, full control. You have full control of that. Whereas in Azure Data Factor mapping data flow, you cannot. You, you, I mean, you still obviously can control what is the order of the, um, of the activities of those components, but those components is already sorted out and, and and showing in some in some in some uh, flavor, yeah. So you cannot just move one of this component and move it uh, and, and and having the diagram like from top to bottom, yeah. 
it's it's uh, out of your control. And it's, it's it's maybe good because you know if you if you ever working with um, code repository, so probably you know how the um, how the package uh, of SSIS uh, looks like behind the scenes. It's 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 already it's actually an XML file. Uh, looks horrible, I know, uh, but if you if you even change very small thing in that diagram in that package, uh, you know it. It, it won't be like small change in this XML file. So basically, mm, some section can be moved from from top to the bottom, or or otherwise, uh, some other section can be moved, or and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So from 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 the code repository and and managing the code uh, and checking um, uh, the the code what's happened, what's happening, and what changed, that's 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 horrible. Yeah. So mm, here. In Azure Data Factory, we don't have that kind of problem. Firstly, the whole code is um, kept uh, in behind the scenes as a JSON format, and the second, uh, the JSON format uh, doesn't does not keep the information about the position of all those uh, all those components, all those uh, activities. So obviously, it knows what is the dependencies between them, but not particular position. Which is good from the code perspective, and if we if we looking at the changes uh, and etc. Yeah. So uh, that's small digression about 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 comparing uh, you know how SSIS and mapping data flow as data factory uh, code works uh, behind the scenes how the files are organized. So if we want to create something more sophisticated, uh, we can authoring this so with obviously browser. There's no, there's still no other tool and probably will not appear in the next uh, one or two years, maybe never. There's no plans for that uh, by Microsoft, but you can open the browser and then go to the menu and on the left you will find the data flow sections and you can build the data flows in there. And then adding the components uh, to to this to this data flow, which I will show you during the demo. So don't expect that we will build something very sophisticated. We we'll build something simple. Just want to show you how how to how to build data flow, how to debug it, uh, what what kind of capabilities we have here, and and how it works behind the scenes as well. Okay. So uh, if we have mapping data flow. There's no drag and drop action. Yeah, there's no drag and drop behavior here. You need to just click the plus button after one of the component that you want to add after it. Yeah, so so when you click this plus button, you will see all the all the types of uh, components uh, or activities that you can use. And uh, choosing that one, you are adding the another you know brick uh, or box to the uh, to the diagram to the to the stream, <coughs> and then you can. Clicking and selecting that one, you can configure that. And yeah, and at the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, the the properties. So it's uh, very now very important to know um, how the Azure Data Factory and specifically mapping data flow uh, uh, works behind the scenes, because it's not uh, so it's not exactly the same like SSIS. So it's what to know. As I mentioned, it's a JSON files describe all the objects, all the activities, pipelines, and data flows. All the objects are, are uh, actually um, uh, kept for Azure Data Factory. And when we build data flows and when we deploy and or run uh, specific pipelines contains data flows, this code, this code of JSON files is compiled and trans translate to the, the Scala and compile to the jar library. OK, that jar library is sending to the Azure Databricks, Databricks cluster. So it's sending to the Azure Databricks cluster installed in there and basically run the code in uh, Azure Databricks. OK, so but again, don't worry about Azure Databricks and etc. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to know anything about the Azure Databricks um, because everything is uh, working uh, for you. Everything is going behind the scenes for you. 
So you don't have to, you know, set up uh, the Azure Databricks. You don't have to create any um, um, any clusters or notebooks and etc. It's 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 fully managed by Microsoft and Azure Data Factory. Okay, so it's demo time. So okay, so it's demo time. So I will show you, hopefully, the working mapping data flow, and we build some simple uh, demonstration about how to you know transform some data uh, with Azure Data Factory and mapping data flow. OK, so I have some, you know, already created instance of Azure Data Factory. Don't worry that I have, you know, plenty of folders here. Uh, I'm just using this uh, every time when I'm presenting something and also I'm using this for testing the other modules that I'm working on uh, in in for the community. Uh, but let's let's create the new pipeline. OK, maybe let's firstly create the data flow. As you can see here, I just collapse those things. As you can see here, we have the data flows. So when I click here, I can cre create data flow. OK, and actually there's two types of data flows in, in Azure Data Factory. Another one is a wrangling data flow, but this is not topic. Uh, for this session, so okay, so we can mm, will uh, focus on the mapping data flow, and this I'm that's why I'm set selecting this one. And yeah, you can choose the name for this. So like data flow, I like to use some prefix, and mm, user group. Yeah, is this correct? I didn't didn't call it wrongly or something. I think it's correct, yeah? It's user group Tur Turkey, yeah? Cool, so we have the name, we have the new new data flow here, as you can see, and the first, uh, very first step is to uh, add the source. There's no other option. So we, we, we have to add the source. So in my example, uh, I will show you that we'll be uh, reading data from the blob storage. Uh, so I have already some data prepared in the blob storage in the CSV format. So I will use it and I will uh, um, create the new uh, the new data set. So as you can see, we have the source type here. There's um, there's a data set, one of the options. Few others option appear pretty recently. Uh, but yeah, we, we now we are just focused on the data set. So the data set, we can select one of the existing but to show you and present how it how to create it, I will show you that from the scratch. OK, so let's click new. And in my case, in my case here for for, for the demo demonstration purposes, I'm using the Azure Blob Storage. So I need to select type of the data set and then click on continue. And then I need to choose uh, one of the format of my Mm, of my files that I will be reading from this blob uh, storage. So I already know that it will be CSV, so I'm choosing this one. And then I need to select a linked service. The linked service is my connector to, 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 to the blob storage. I don't want to bother you and showing this how to create the linked service and etc. Uh, because it's just, you know, waste of time, but I already have the linked service created. So this is my linked service, OK? So uh, when I linked service, when I selected the linked service, I need to, you know, configure the path of this file. So firstly, I need to select the container, put input the container directory and file. Those I have this uh, icon here. When I click, I can open the browser of my blob storage. So obviously if I have access I can browse um, all the folders and etc. So in this case, in this demo, I will be using the Stack Overflow folder because I have some data in there exported from the Stack Overflow database. It's open source database. You can download it from the from, from the internet. So there's few tables in there and um, Brintos are very often uh, using this this database to present how to how to tweak some queries or how to um, how to how to play with data how to build some joints and etc so it's it, it's very good example because it contains uh, plenty of data one of the examples here one of the files here is the badges so this is the export from the badges table 
uh, but only limited to one megabyte, so 100 megabytes, and the file contains the headers. OK, so I'm choosing this one. So this will be our first source. OK, so when we click that, OK. Oh, I didn't change the name for the data set, but we can do it now, I believe. So this is data set like badges. 100. Let's give me. Let me uh, name it like this. Uh, I just want to keep it uh, unique across my whole Azure Data Factory. So this is the badges and here we have the configuration of this data set. So I just created. Yeah, as you can see, I have all the file path here and you have much more information and um, configuration options here like compression type, for example. So you can read the compressed file um, because we using the cluster in Azure Databricks, we, we have the comp compute uh, to basically work uh, and un un unzipped uh, or un uncompressed uh, some files. Yeah. So the other, you know, the configuration that required basically to understand uh, and validate the, the file, the text file. This is the, the CSV, but obviously we need to configure what is the column delimiter, what is the role at delimiter, and etc. And what is good here, you have this preview button. So if you click on the preview button, you will see if your configuration looks good or not. So in our case, it's not really good, uh, uh, looks, looks very well, because firstly, we don't have header. We don't have the normal columns. Everything is, uh, you know, is joined in 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 connected in one in in one column so we have one column and everything uh, you know in on in, in this one column so as you can see my delimiter is not comma but um, but this pipe uh, chart uh, character so let's change it let's configure that so from a low delimiter perspective is look good looks good but uh, we don't care about this one we care about this one so pipe character is here and there's no compression let's have a look on this how it looks like now much better okay but also as we can see and uh, there's first row um, it's a uh, names for the column so also the data set configuration allows us to use it uh, with this option first row as header if we click that and click preview data everything should be fine right now yeah, so as you can see, uh, you know, some standard, you know, um, format of configuration of format of CSV files are pretty easy to 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 enclose and discover here. And, you know, this preview button is very useful. Cool. So we built and tested our, you know, first uh, first source. So that's good. So I will save it because I already have my Azure Data Factory connected to the GitHub. So I have this uh, option, this button uh, enabled and available. And available. Um, cool, so this is our data flow. So as you can see already, we have this source. This source using the data set that we created. So I will call it like badges from CSV. This is uh, the name of uh, of this source. OK, so then let's add another source. Let's add another source. As you can see, we can have uh, multiple sources. It's not a problem, obviously. So another source will be um, the table uh, from the data from from user table. And this time I'm, I'm, I, I will use the existing one because I don't want to spend too much time on creating what you already seen and learn. So let me figure out which is the appropriate source so in the past i was presenting uh, you know the sources the data um actually reading directly from the from the azure secure database but for some reason i just lost all the tables in that in that database uh, i just double check that uh, you know one hour before uh, i realized that one hour before the session so uh but just wanted to show you and and please be aware that you can use uh, many sources many different sources including secure database as well uh, but very often 
um, the best practice, maybe not best practice, but the you know the architectures uh, of 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 this uh, and and the cluster, you know, and from also um, performance perspective, would be better to to use the um, the, the the files. So the file should be prepared on the blob storage or ADLS, preferably on ADLS. Um, again, from from performance perspective. Uh, so, but all those data you can prepare in the pipeline before you run this data flow. I will show you that next step when we finish building this uh, data flow. Uh, so yeah, this time I will use this source user blob CSV. Let me open that and make sure again that we have everything in here, that the data is uh, is, is there. Yes, yeah, so we have some data, which is good. Columns are OK, so that's fine. So I can close this now. And back to my to my pipeline. OK, I have I have two sources. So this is the users. Uh, from CSV. OK, I have two sources. And then I would like to join those two sources by one selected column. And I know that the badges contains the user ID and user ID also contains ID. So let's join those two sources uh, to to the one stream and make it uh, make it one stream. So when I click in here, as you showed, uh, as I showed you during the during the slides, you will see all the types of the activities. Yeah. So what's interesting me now is the join mm, activity. So when I click it here, then I can see how I can configure this join. So as you can see, there's there's no there's no coding here. There's no TCQL. There's no Scala. There's no Python language that you need to know. Just just clicking uh, and and adding new actions. Yeah, and then using your UI in in your browser, you're just configuring this stuff. Okay. So as you can see, I just join. So we'll be joining by I think by user. ID. So this is my left stream, which is the badges, and my right stream, because I have only another one, is users. So I will be using this uh, inner join, and my left column would be. Whoops, why I don't have the columns? Okay, I know. I need to back to this, and 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 let me double check if I have all the columns. All the schema populate. Yes, this is the case. Yeah, so I because I created the new data set, I didn't populate uh, the schema. I didn't import the schema, so I will do it now. From connection. And this basically read the file and create the schema. OK, so obviously I have all the str string types because it's a, a text file. It's a CSV file. So let me save this and close. So now we should be able, I hope, let me double check. Yes, we have the columns in the projection tab right now here. And then we can. <clears throat> I hope we will be able. Yes, we can see those columns here. In the right, I already have because I had this. Um, I had this data set created before, so also the schema was imported. Cool, so I've just configured my first join. I have configured my two sources and configured first join activity. So let me save that all code. And that's it. So now what we can do when we're building this, uh, you know, mapping data flow, also, what is good from the you know debugging perspective or checking if we have all the data clean or what kind of transformation we are doing or what is the result of this transformation, we can use something uh, like data preview. Is this data preview using the cluster behind the scenes, the Azure Databricks cluster, which I uh, have already started because you need to switch on this data data flow debug. This is this is my session. And if I open, let me open that actually. What was view active? Yeah, it's here. So this is my session. As you can see, it's one minus one minute remaining. So I'm not sure if this data flow still 
working. Yeah, we'll see in the minute. So that was my session started, but let's try to do the data preview. So when I click refresh, yeah, I had I, I've got this timeout. So uh, as you can see, I, I to to do and and use this all those benefits of data preview and 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 checking what's happening on each stage uh, in this mapping data flow. I need to turn on the the cluster. The cluster is behind the scenes and and then managing by our data factory. But it's it's me to decide, you know, if I want to start this cluster or not, because I'm paying for that cluster. Yeah. So your debug session has time out. Yes, I know that already. And what now? Please turn it on for me. So obviously it will take a few minutes. Last time when I presenting this topic, it was about five minutes. I hope. Microsoft fix it and I read it because they promised to, to do something with that. I hope they they did they did some some you know um, some tweaks uh, and optimization here around the, um, the debug clusters. So I hope it will finish uh, much quicker than five minutes in time. Okay, so if the cluster will be ready, we'll be able to you know to actually run this part of code send it to the cluster and get uh, the result at each stage at each uh, step here okay so i will be able to show you some data here uh, let's click on the inspect the inspect showing uh, showing you all the columns and basically what's going on at this step so what is the what is the output of 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 this specific uh, activity okay and optimize. You can decide, you know, how many partitions you you you, you can have uh, and etc. So by default, it's as far as I remember, is 200. But also, you can control that. Uh, sometimes is is very useful to double check that that options and set up uh, some specific uh, partition uh, um, in terms of amount of those partition or in terms of the key how we partitioning the data. Because you know it's 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 big data processing, so that's why we're using the cluster uh, like Azure Databricks uh, cluster, because it, the the process can be scaled up, uh, and and each you know big data processing uh, using the partitioning uh, to be able to scale up uh, the process. So uh, this is still running. So in the meantime, I will add another another action. So. Let's say that I would like to um, I would like to, for example, select only few columns from this user uh, CSV because I don't need uh, all of the, all those columns. So when we check the inspect, I don't need all those columns. OK, so. I can also filtering um, uh, vertically by columns. Uh, which columns I would like to left in my stream. So for this, I need to use the select. And the select allows me to, to select the columns I want to left. So uh, we have the select. This is our output. Select, select user columns. I would like to name it. And then I would like to remove some columns from here. Let me double check what we need. We need ID, for example, age, uh, create date, display name might be fine. Maybe email hash. This one as well. OK, rest of those columns I will remove. OK, and I will left only those columns. Cool. Optimize now. OK. Yeah, so then I would like to use this uh, activity, this box to to our join. OK, so let's me change that very quickly. And that should be easy because our right stream was the user from CSV. But now I would like to use the select users columns. OK. And as you can see, it's done. But now you need to just double check some uh, columns that we have here. So let me use this is the left user ID still valid. 
and ID. Yeah, so this is the ID from from the select user comes uh, box or stream. Cool. The box is still running. Let me double check if I can. No, I still I need, still need to wait for this uh, for this cluster. OK, so let's in the meantime add another action. So let's add uh, another action like maybe we'd like to aggregate uh, those data. Oh. Data flow cluster is ready, but there's some bug here. OK, let me click refresh. I hope that the cluster is working uh, correctly. So in a few seconds uh, we should see some data, some example data here. Uh, after this, uh, after this join actually. So what kind of columns it should uh, uh, contains? It should contains all those columns. So let's wait another seconds. It's fetching. So what, what is going on now? OK, so we have the data. So as you can see, we have ID. We have another ID because we joined by the ID. So yeah, we don't need all those IDs. Oh, no, sorry. The first ID is a batch ID and the second one would be user ID. Yes, exactly. That's the point. Uh, and yeah, the other things like a date, age, creation date, and etc. So this is our stream. That uh, this is how the the stream looks like at this point after this activity. Yeah. So as you can see, also there you have the information, uh, the statistical information about how many rows we have, how many rows. Why is 300? That's weird. Uh, insert 100. But three. OK, I know why 100, because it 100 probably comes from one stream and in total we have uh, 328 after that join operation. OK, so what else we can see here? So as you can see, you can you can preview the data. That's the first thing. But also if you click on one of the column, you can see some statistics for that column. So if you click on that button, Let me close this properties. So if you click on the button, you will see the statistic for selected columns. So we have some basic information like how many um, values are null uh, or not nulls. What is the maximum length? OK, in this case it's length because this type type of this column is still string like for the others. You can see this by this by, by this icon. ABC means uh, means uh, that is string type of column. OK, so maybe we should change it. Uh, let me double check. Should able to do this. Do, do, do. Uh, here. Oh, something has been changed from the last time. Mm hmm. <laughs> OK. Let me add another action. I should be able to change the type. This is this is my goal. Yeah, I want I, I want I want to change the types of some columns. Wait, I should be able to do this. Let me double check that. Mm, yes, here in the source. Yeah, because the data sets uh, has string for all columns and we cannot change that uh, in there. But here in the source we can change it so. So we know that this ID is integer already. Yeah? The another user ID is also integer. And the date is date, but oh, we will not be using this one. So OK, I, I, I will show you something. I'm not sure if I configure that correctly in terms of format of this date. But I can specify the format of date. Yeah, so you have the opportunity here to 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 provide what is what is your format for for your for your CSV file. Yeah, so this is a, a another great great option. So let me mm, take a look on the data. And make sure what's the what's the format of those dates. 
Ah, so we have another. OK, so I don't want to play with that right now. So let's let, let me let me leave it. I don't want to complicate this demo and 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 face uh, some issue because of this date right now. So let me just. We're being let me leave this as a string. We'll not use this date, so don't worry. OK, so and now we have the integers here, so let me do the same in here projections so we'll be use this column this is also number uh creation date yeah this is another one display name this is the numeric value as well and this is some hash that's fine so when we back to our join now we have more integer types of columns and let me double check if our join is also correct because obviously you need to have exactly the same type if you're joining to to streams yeah by some specific columns you need to have exactly the same types for those columns so i have already it's one two three means integer okay so if i click on this i can refresh those data this time it should be much faster But anyway, and in the meantime, I will I will continue building. Uh, OK, yes, yeah, so we have it. So uh, as you can see, the types are ready um, and uh, you know present here. So if we click, click on some numeric column like here, we did it before by before we had the strings. So now we have the numeric values and the numeric values gives us more statistic information. Yeah, null, not null as well, uh, as always, but you have the standard deviation, percentile here, null, uh, average, maximum, minimum. Yeah, so like for numeric values, you have more information about the, you know, statistical information about this column. So this is great. I What I'm showing this uh, again, because that's that's great opportunity you know, to, to give you the insight to your data and maybe you realize that you need to clean some data at this stage. Yeah, so without using any external tool, you can just have a look on the data preview and that's it. So let's do another one, which will be the aggregations in this time. OK, so let me aggregate this stream by 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 age of the user. Bar age and income stream is this one. Yes, and I would like to aggregate this that was the inner join don't want to make any mistake so we want to aggregate by age and maybe name uh, maybe only h h h h yeah okay Okay, cool. We have aggregated by age and also use the name. Okay, so our data should be aggregated here. And let's have a look on the data preview. Uh, is invalid, fix error. Okay, what is going on? Should have at least one aggregate column. Ah, uh, yes. Don't I have? Ah, sorry. Yes. So I would like to leave this one. I don't remember which one I wanted to disaggregate. It should be like, ha uh, ha ha. Let me double check what I had before. Don't remember exactly how I configured that uh, before. So let me have a look on the on the data flow I created in the past. So we have aggregation, yeah, age, name, and in aggregates, ah, row column, yeah, obviously. A row column, and we we'll use count here, okay. So let's back to our data flow. And yeah, build 
using some expression. So when we click on this uh, on the expression, the new window will appear, and then we can use all the columns that uh, you know they are that um, available in the streams, and we can using also plenty of functions available here just for us to you know to using it. So also we can filtering. So as you can see, there's some few types of count functions, and even if you start, you know, um, uh, writing the code or function expression here, there's IntelliSense that should, but it doesn't right now. Count. Still, we have, you know, this information about how the function, what kind of. Um, uh, attributes uh, or parameters, uh, input parameters you need to use. Yeah, so in my case, it will be, as you remember, user ID. Yeah, but we have the IntelliSense in terms of uh, columns and etc. Yeah, so this is this is the expression I would like to build. And my output column will be can I change it here? Yes, now I can change it here. So my output would be like count as far as I remember. We can we can call it, call it, call it like this. Yeah, and uh, OK, save and finish. So this is our aggregation. This is group by this. And uh, yeah, so we can do the preview. Refresh the preview as so to be able to see basically the output of this aggregation. So yeah, for example, if we'd like to, uh, you know, clean some data, um, we can add, add another another um, component here to basically filtering some data. Yeah, uh, because when I know that I have some dirty data in there, I just want to, you know, uh, filter uh, some of the rows. OK, I have only one row and I, tell, I, I will tell you why. Because I'm still working on the example subset of data, okay? And you can configure that here. Uh, as far as I remember, it was the configuration also here, but in general, yeah, they move it already, so that's good. So there's a, there's a limitation, yeah. So when you're working with debug session, basically to to save time and and and, and compute in the in the cluster, and limited the time that we are executing each of these steps because potentially you know designing the big data uh, stream the big data process and transformation you're probably working with million of rows yeah so you can uh, limit those data in here but i don't want to limit this so to sample source source remember how to disable it so i will change it like this this is the parameters yeah uh okay and then let me double check one other option not this it was one of the option okay the sampling is here yeah so there's another option you can choose the sampling or not so obviously even if i'm sampling here so it disabled. So yeah, it was it was basically the option comes from the uh, debug settings uh, in this case. So I can rerun the whole process, but don't to wa waste uh, the time right now. So let me have a look on this. So as you can see, I have some age like null uh, null values in in the stream. So I would like to filter out those uh, values, and again I can use uh, some expression here. Like for example, is is null of age, but basically give me or and filter leave only those uh, records which are is not null. Yeah, so this is my filtering action, very simple one, and that's it. We can you can every time when you're building something, you can click the validate all when Azure Data Factory double check all the code here. No sync transformation. Yeah, obviously, because I didn't finish that building this uh, uh, this process yet. So that's why the sync transformation is not here yet. So. I'm filtering like 
filter h not null. Let's name it like this. Yeah? Cool. So we have something very simple building here. And let me add the sync at the end. But obviously we will not see any interesting data because we need to refresh the whole, we need to run the whole, uh, the whole mapping data flow, but we'll do it uh, at the end. So let me add the sync at the end. So the sync, and I will push all those data to again to the blob storage, okay? So I will use uh, the existing uh, data set. CSV output three would be fine. Let me double check what I have in my output three. I have some data in there, so let me remove them. Uh, there's more data in there, so yeah. Let's remove them. As you can see in the past, I using um, different uh, different uh, formats of files. Uh, as an output, you can still do it. Uh, so let me back to this one. And yeah, so we'll be using this data set already configured. And what, so we need to double check what is our mapping. Uh, by default, all the columns goes to the, to the sink, but also you can choose uh, which columns can go to the sink. And again, data preview is is here. So also we can select the single partitioning if we want to have only one file at the end. So let me check one. Yes, the file, the, the setting of the of the sync. If we are pushing everything to the to the to the blob storage, for example, or to the file, is here. So I would like to push everything to the one single file, which might be called like. Power BI CSV output. Okay, so that's fine. And let me save everything. So, okay, let's assume that we finishing building our mapping data flow pipeline. I hope this gives you know the the idea and and then a bit knowledge about how to play with mapping data flow and how to play with Azure Data Factory at the end. Let me create um, the pipeline with only one activity which run this data flow. OK, so let's create the new pipeline. The new pipeline. OK, so this is my pipeline and I need to add the activity here, which is my data flow. So you can see the one of the types of the activities is the data flow and now I need to choose the existing or I can create the new data flow just from here and my data flow is this one. OK, so this is my activity. This is my settings for it. I can choose the which integration runtime I can use for it. Uh, the configuration of this integration runtime. So if you have really big sources and and if you are you know processing um, uh, big data sets you can use uh, mm, uh, accordingly larger um, cluster uh, so here you can configure that yeah and and also you know you can choose the types of uh, of of the compute. This th those types exactly you can uh, you can see and read more about it about them uh, in in the documentation about the Azure Databricks. Yeah, because as I mentioned, we are using Databricks clusters here. So this is exactly the, the configuration of the clusters. So and some parameters you can pass if you if you if you have or if you require it and etc. But we have very simple one here. So let me just validate all. As you can see, no errors, no, no, no problems with validation because we have in our, in our, our mapping data flow, we have already sync. And I would like to run this one uh, to run mapping data flow. So let me run this now. And in, I'm not sure exactly how long because uh, probably 
this uh, this session we'll be using the separate uh, newly created uh, cluster. I don't remember how it works right now. Uh, maybe they changed something in recently or during the few months uh, in in terms of optimization the process and then you know debugging um, and working with with uh, Azure Data Factory in debug mode. But we'll see, yeah, the process started, so we can following the process here. And if you click that classes icon, you will see um, how far the process progress, yeah? So now we are in the, in the sync, I think, as you can see how many, you have the, those information about, you know, how many rows has been um, um, passed through specific uh, activities like here we have 1 million, 2 million rows. Yeah, it, this is like 900. Uh, we achieved 900 rows in this aggregate after action of this aggregation by age. So uh, and and also how long time each of this action took. Yeah, cool. Our process finished successfully. So if we this is still updating, let me refresh that. Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, if I click on the on, on I can click on any of these activities and and see the other information, very important information from the perspective that you would like to optimize the process. Because as you can see at the beginning, let me click on here as a, I selected the uh, badges from CSV and as you can see on the right hand side, this partitioner chart showing me that I have mm, two millions uh, over two million of rows, uh, but I'm using four partitions only. OK, so I am using four partition. Let's have a look on this. Mm, don't have everything about this. That's strange. Uh -huh. Weird, OK, when we click on this join activity, you will see that uh, still we have four partitions and when we aggregate by age, we already have 200 partitions because we didn't uh, configure how many partitions we would like to have. Uh, so the process assume that would be good to split um, the stream by the columns, but the um, upper limit. I'm not sure if that's you know constant limit uh, for, but it's uh, for sure it's a default um, uh, maximum partition uh, is uh, 200. So yeah. You can check what is going on on each of these uh, activities and also at the bottom of the screen you can see those information about how many rows, what time and etc. And at the end for sync you can see what is the mapping basically for for the for the output columns. So we have three columns in here count, age and name where the name has been mapped to the to the badges from CSV name column age has been mapped to the age and count has been calculated during the process from the beginning and and basically the the count based on the user id from from this source okay so many many useful information in here not only in debug mode when you're designing the whole process but also when you're debugging the the, the actual running process during the run or if it's finished running okay so yeah, so let's double check what we have in in the sync. So we should have some data here, yeah? Yeah, so we have CSV. Let me refresh this. This is zero, but this should contain some data. So the file is pretty small. So if I click edit, oh, I have nothing. Something happened. <laughs> Probably maybe I just uh, use some wrong aggregation or not wrong, maybe filtering or something like that. Let me double check that quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on that because not worth. Just wanted to show you the, 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 the whole concept, the main concept of this. So yeah, as you can see here, we had 900 rows, but here we filtered it probably something wrong and we filter it, it down to zero. So that's why we don't have anything in the in the sink. But now this tool gives us, you know, the full uh, um, capability to double check where we made a mistake. Yeah, 
So if we have, you know, zero records, for example, like in this case uh, at the end. OK, so. I'm talking already about one hour, but Halil mentioned me that I can uh, do this, this this session a bit longer. That's why I'm not hurry up uh, with this, right? Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> one, you. one hour is not enough for data factor, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is this is it. I think what I wanted to show from the demo perspective of Azure Data Factory. Let me back to the slides. Or oh, maybe before we go to the slides, maybe there's some questions uh, about this, what I showed yeah, yeah. so far. Let yeah, me yeah, open yeah. the. Oh, there's a show Q and A. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, we have two questions. Can we trigger data factory jobs by Python code or another method instead of scheduling? Uh, trigger data factory jobs. You mean the data factory Pipe, pipeline probably, yeah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. So um, obviously you can you can run uh, you can run any pipeline if you if you want. Uh, so if you can use the, the 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 Python. You can use the PowerShell if you want. Uh, you can use Azure Functions. Uh, so what you need to use is the API. So. I'm not very well familiar with the other API, but there's um, some libraries for Azure Data Factory. What I'm using uh, very often is um, um, is a PowerShell a PowerShell module, which gives you. Let me double check one of the codes. Actually, I can make some comments uh, during you are preparing. Uh, yeah, you can also use, uh, of course, Microsoft Flow uh, or uh, Azure functions, uh, these are very similar, not other functions, sorry, logic apps. Mm -hmm. uh, there are oh, yes. built-in connectors for uh, Azure Data Factory uh, to run a pipeline or check the status, etc. So you can use these methods. Uh, you can call these methods from a, a Azure logic apps. And of course, uh, you, your question is ask, uh, you are asking about the triggering it from a Python uh, application. In order to call this uh, logic app function or uh, Microsoft Flow or Power Automate function, you can uh, set a HTTPS trigger, uh, a request trigger. So when whenever you need to trigger a pipeline refresh, uh, you can call this HTTP URL uh, from your Python uh, Python code. So it will trigger the pipeline event. I yeah, guess exactly. you, you mm -hmm. were also mentioning same thing, right, Kamil? Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about the logic app. Yeah, that's true. There's I, I didn't play with logic app for, for, for months, uh, but yeah, there's more and more connection is there. So uh, if, if there's a already connector for that, yeah, go go for it. And uh, and <laughs> because I'm just old school guy, you know, I'm using all the, you know, PowerShell scripts and and other things, but yeah, definitely it, it's it's worth to using something what gives you. It depends you on the better. user actually. Some per, uh, some yeah. people prefer uh, hard coding using PowerShell, and some people uh, prefer using a UI to define it. Just oh, up yeah. to you. That, that, <laughs> yeah, but you have plenty of opportunities to here to how to control and how to how to run. You can you can you can run some pipelines. You can even, you know, uh, create some pipelines. You can you can run some trigger, create trigger, etc. There's a there's API for Azure Data Factory. There's PowerShell module for Azure Data Factory. So whatever works for you better, you can use that one. Yeah, and Python is very, it's, with Python is very easy to use um, to use any libraries that out of there. Yeah, so you can you can use it. Yeah, definitely. I don't have an example here, but yeah, you can do it. And uh, another question is, if I'm looking on the, my second screen, it is uh, fully capable ca capable to replace on-prem SSIS. Is there any missing feature compared to SSIS? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> good question. Okay, <laughs> very good question. Very very good two questions. <laughs> So first, firstly, it's it's basically uh, there's it's not a goal for Azure Data Factory to to replace SSIS. Okay, 
So firstly, you if you want to, and for example, if you want to lift and shift your existing SSIS packages to, to the cloud, to the Azure, you can do it using, you know, uh, the the integration the integration runtime uh, that that does the capability that gives you you know uh, opportunity to run your your existing code your existing SSIS packages uh, in the cloud. Uh, but I think it's not it's not your question. Yeah, uh, the question is yeah it's fully capable to replace. Um, that's a hard question. Yes and no because depends on what you basically want to achieve. This is different approach working here with with Azure Data Factory. This is this 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 with here we are using, you know, big data transformation, big data approach using partitioning by par partitions by default, as you as you could see. Uh, um, uh, the clusters that need to be spin up and might take few few minutes basically to be ready to go and and use. So as you can see, there's a different approach. And also in SSIS, you could have um, plenty of some third party components that you can use. So if you're using something like this, you you will not be able to use it here. But also you cannot just convert. There's no conversion tool like you'd like to migrate the existing SSIS package to to your SSIS. Sorry, SSIS packages to Azure Data Factory. There's no some no no something like that. Basically, so if we like to transfer your existing SSIS package, you need to build that from the scratch. So, uh, so think about it because uh, maybe it's not worth. Maybe it's not worth the efforts. Uh, if you're building something, some big data processing, and if that is new project, definitely go for Azure Data Factory. Uh, that might be the only pipelines. It might be pipelines plus uh, mapping data flow. It might be pipelines plus plus uh, Azure Databricks. If you prefer building the code in in Python or maybe Scala, it's it's a the Azure Data Factory is fully flexible here. Yeah. So, but yeah. There's no simple like lift and shift the existing SSIS packages. Yeah, but I will show you the something in the in the next slides. That's that's a very good question. Uh, is there any missing feature compared to SSIS? So as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, yeah, there will be probably some missing, but but just because uh, there's just different approach. Yeah, so here you have much more uh, options. Uh, because it's different approach and maybe some maybe some operation has been missed. I didn't investigate so deep, but as you will see in the few next slides, I will show you how you can compare activities of SSIS to the activities in mapping data flow in Azure Data Factory. So let's more maybe move to, to the slides, uh, continuing answering of these questions. So I will go very quickly through this. So you already have seen this one so that we can using the data preview in the back mode and see the data. You could see the data flow execution plan. So how the whole process uh, done and the statistics uh, per statistics uh, per each activity and also the mapping uh, per sync activity. And that's it. Also, the, for our data factory, there's a uh, you know the full of examples uh, template gallery that you can reuse. Uh, try to try to find out some some existing example uh, if you if you want to build something from scratch because probably someone else already built uh, something before you. So you can just click and apply. Uh, that template uh, from from template gallery and just configure the process. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's some information about the song source and sync. What kind of types uh, we can have for mapping data flow? Because it's again, we are using different engine here. We are using Azure Databricks engine here, so that's that's the reason. Uh, why you can't use uh, all those over 100 types of connections yeah, for, for mapping data flow. But again, if you require another you know, type of uh, connectors, you can prepare your data in the Azure Data Lake storage in the pipeline before you run mapping data flow. Yeah, and, and, and then continually 
uh, reading those data from the Azure Data Lake storage, uh, like I, I, I showed you during the demo. Yeah. OK, so there's some, you know, source and sync capabilities uh, that has been introduced like uh, several months ago. I don't want to go through all of them, but yeah, you have full control how to how to work with files in the in the source and as well as uh, in the sync. OK, and the data sets formats, uh, as you could see, there's not not only the JSON, there's no only so there's no not only CSV, sorry, uh, format, but also there's a JSON, there's a, something like Avro. You can read now even XML. I haven't seen this before, uh, and uh, most popular the, the most and most uh, the more and more popular format is Parquet because it's very efficient uh, and, and and pretty small and all very efficient from the um, performance perspective. Um, so the Parquet is something uh, that something like think about it like a counterpart for the clustered column store indexes in SQL Server. Yeah, so it's it's just organizing the data in different way and also working with them uh, much uh, much faster. Uh, yeah, so also you can configure uh, the execution settings using, as I showed you, you know, different um, size of cluster. You can configure, you know, when you would like to stop the cluster if you're not working with actively and etc. to basically save you money. Yeah. And yeah, if you'd like to see more updates about Azure Data Factory, you can use this icon. Uh, at the top of, of, of UI, then you will see all the latest uh, release notes or updates about Azure Data Factory, not only the mapping data flow. Yeah. Also, I would like to encourage you to, to following those three accounts. Um, those three accounts on Twitter, if you're using Twitter. So go for it because uh, Mark and Daniel, uh, they are working with uh, in, 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 in Azure Data Factory team. They are um, uh, Product managers uh, or, or PMs, uh, so uh, you can follow those those um, those Twitter accounts and and see the latest basically from the market from the from the Azure Data Factory market. Okay, so I promise that we confirm compare SSIS to to uh, to Azure Data Factory mapping data flow. So this chart, this is only the subset. This is the, the only the sub area. Some part of the screenshot from the whole um, uh, cheat sheet, which I created probably over one year ago when I started playing with mapping, mapping data flow when it was in private preview. So I was I was basically wondering uh, like uh, like you are uh, right now. Yeah, so how I can compare, you know, SSIS with 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 mapping data flow activities. So how I can compare them? Is they actually the counterpart or not really? Is this the equivalent or not? So, you know how I can compare this to the to the TSQL, for example, language. How I can do similar thing in SQL Server? Yeah. So here, I mean, not here, not in this slide, but uh, here you have the links that you can download this cheat sheet, and 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 chat check the, the whole a um, and the, the whole page uh, uh, a four format uh, with the whole table that explaining the um, the mapping basically those uh, those um, capabilities between um, between SSIS uh, activities between the activities in mapping data flow and TSQL in SQL server. So I think and I hope this uh, a little bit uh, at least answer the second question. OK. I can see any other questions. Uh, I think we don't have further questions, but I have one question for you, especially regarding the new Azure Synapse. What do you think about it, about it? Which, which is claiming to combine several tools into one interface? Very bold claim. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's uh, that is very broad discussion. I mean, uh, generally, I think it's a good, uh, good, good direction uh, because basically, you know, uh, I've seen that as well. You know, the customers looking for the tool that gives it gives them, you know, the the whole um, opportunity to work with data. And actually, if you if you think about it, what is the working with data? 
there's a plenty of of thing, yeah. There's a plenty of thing. There's a you know, like we would like to have the environment when uh, the um, the analytic people would like to uh, check the data, play with data, you know, analytics analytics them and 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 maybe create some like proof of concept, yeah, uh, something which could be able to transform to the much robust uh, process later on. But, you know, previously the, the, the whole process uh, was very, very long and expensive because, you know, uh, because of the, you know, whole, you know, the documentation process, you know, a lot of teams had to, you know, talking with each other uh, and then the IT development team has been engaged to build something and you know all the iteration ha had to be happened to basically build something and now with with some tools like Azure Databricks uh, or like this Azure Synapse right now you can build it much more faster because if some people know Python some people know TCQL and and also having you know the simple you know transformation approach like I showed you during the this demo mapping data flow the people who don't know how to coding, uh, they can already, you know, having access to the sources, they can just grab some data, transform them, and and then start working on them. So yeah, I I I think that the Azure Synapse uh, has, uh, you know, uh, it's is it's it's a good idea. Obviously, Microsoft will be, uh, you know, developing this tool and is focusing on this tool uh, much more right now. Yeah, was focusing from the beginning, but uh, I know how many teams working on this tool. So uh, I believe that will be the, the the future. I mean, it doesn't mean that the Azure, fact, Azure Data Factory uh, will be wiped out, but it, it still will be as a tool. But um, uh, for those who know, for, for those of you who knows, Azure Data Factory is a uh, part of the Azure Synapse, so you can play with the data and building the same, uh, you know, uh, the same transformation process uh, in there as well. So uh, yeah, so yeah, but this is a broader discussion. It's basically like a, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. yeah. Everyone, everyone has different, uh, you know, flavors and and requirements. And uh, but I think in the future Azure Synapse uh, will cover most of the requirements uh, for for many teams basically across the companies. Okay, so if you want to learn something about data services in Azure, then we need to invest in Azure Synapse. <laughs> Uh, if you want to learn about the data sources, exactly. data, ser data services, I mean, uh, uh, Azure Synapse looks like the combined version of many different data uh, yeah. services. Yeah. So we need to invest in it. Yeah, definitely it's worth to have a look on this, how it works, how how it, how well the Microsoft progressing with this tool and, and, and start playing with that because um, uh, it's it's also, you know, it's it's also something looks like Azure Databricks where you have notebooks and etc. But also there's much more, you know, uh, opportunity to work with uh, ad hoc uh, pools um, of uh, of secure server, for example. And and uh, yeah, you have you, you can use the, the, the clusters as well and and um, .NET Spark uh, uh, right now as well. So yeah, um, they they are extending the tool, and um, I think it's a place for 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 whole teams uh, in in the company. Okay, we don't have further questions. Would you would you like to say something regarding the usage cost? Um, not really. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like to talking about the the, the the prices. I'm not even prepared for that, but yeah, obviously you can use uh, use the, the calculator calculator in Azure. So obviously, using mapping data flow, you are paying uh, the most the most the most cost is uh, paying for this compute for this cluster, yeah, because uh, the cluster must must be spin up behind the scenes. So the most expensive part of this is the cost of these clusters. So, but yeah, if you want to take a look of the costs, uh, uh, 
they are very similar or if not the same like for 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 other data bricks obviously it depends of your configuration and the size of the cluster that you you will choose yeah but at the end what i wanted to show you is basically the two uh, two open source um, code which uh, with the links you can see on the screen right uh, on the screen right now so the first one is uh, Azure Data Factory Tools, which is the PowerShell uh, module I created a few months ago and still developing. Uh, this module allows you to deploy Azure Data Factory from, from the code, directly from the code. So this is the, the, the opposite what Microsoft uh, suggests and recommend uh, using, uh, using IDF Publish branch. Uh, but I know that may, many, many companies, uh, including Altius uh, actually, using the, the approach for to, to deploying the code uh, from the direct from the JSON uh, JSON um, files from the from the objects. So um, uh, in both approaches, there's a pros and cons, but I think the more more benefits uh, is uh, is is with uh, with um, with that approach with uh, de deploying. Azure Data Factory from uh, directly from the code. So this uh, Azure, um, so this this PowerShell uh, module helps you to do that. And the second one is the code of um, of extension for Azure um, Databricks. Sorry, for Azure DevOps, uh, for for Azure pipelines. And with that uh, custom tasks, you can very easily add the new task and configure what is your source, what is your target, and without again, without any coding, without any writing any line of code, you can just configure the task like in all, any other task in 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 Azure DevOps pipelines, like release pipelines, for example, in this case, and you can configure few fields. Uh, still having having full control and using full op opportunity, full, full full capability of this tool, and deploy Azure Data Factory without any extra efforts to the target uh, Azure uh, service. So yeah, I would like to encourage you to have a look on this. Um, in in the future, I will prepare a separate session just uh, just about the deployment uh, Azure Data Factory because, as I mentioned, there's a two approaches. And 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 I, I know that people still struggling with this because uh, yeah because deploying Azure Data Factory isn't easy, isn't still easy. So it's it's worth to talk about this and it's worth to you know sharing this knowledge. So yeah, but have a look on this. Um, the GitHub also contains not only the code itself but contains uh, the the whole documentation as well. So take a look at this. And resources, I'm stopped pushing and and you know sharing the resources on the slide i'm just sharing the the one link uh, so this is the link uh, in this in this page uh, on my blog you can see all the resources and uh, i uh, from time to time i'm updating those resources adding new one or maybe just checking or updating if something changed so in this page is the latest um, the latest update from me about the resources about the Azure Data Factory. Yeah, so if you want to have a look on this uh, and and learn more about the Azure Data Factory, definitely uh, I would like to encourage you to go there. Yeah, let me double check if we have any other question. I can't see any other. So, but don't worry if you want to, uh, you know, um, <laughs> take any other questions. Uh, feel free to contact with me. Uh, you can reach me by by email, by by Twitter. Um, this is the link to the to the to the to the blog uh, to the to the blog. Sorry, too many blob storages. Um, to the blog secureplayer.net, and also this presentation. I will I will put this presentation to my GitHub repository uh, in community events uh, folder, so you will be able to download this um, this presentation from. And GitHub. And yeah, so yeah, I would like to encourage you to have a look on this Azure Data Factory and maybe even mapping data flow in the future. And yeah, have a fun. Yeah, we, we, we thank you, Camille. <laughs> Uh, that, that was a great introduction to Azure Data Factory. Uh, a great tool. Looks thank not e not very easy, but that was a great session uh, about it. Thank you, Camille, again.
uh, it was a really great session uh, having the really good uh, aspects of the Azure Data Factory. Thanks again. No problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mustafa and Halil, to, to having me. Thank you. And Thanks yeah, a lot. I hope, I hope maybe in the next year we'll be able to meet in person in Turkey. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why not? I, I'll be more than happy to meet you. Although we, we are working at the same company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> can see but other. now when we are, you know, with this lockdown working from, from home, so there's not too many opportunities to to meet in person or even having a lunch together. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. we need you to can. we need to wait. Yeah, we will meet you soon again. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.